Hello, and welcome to this RSCAT FX tutorial video. This is video one, providing a general introduction to using RSCAD FX. I'll begin by launching RSCAD FX. Note that we no longer have a file manager screen. Everything the user needs can now be accessed from this main central module, which also includes the component library and draft canvas. RSCAD FX uses tabs, case tabs on the right and utility tabs on the left, to organize information. When a draft case is opened, a case tab is created for it. The user can easily switch between different cases by clicking on the corresponding tabs. On the left side of the screen are the utility tabs, including the component library. We'll explain these tabs in a moment. First, let's take a look at the top drop-down menu. Clicking File brings us to New Case and Open Case functionality, as well as a global settings area, where the user can change directories, linked programs for PDF reader and text editor, and more. Clicking View allows the user to reset the RSCAD FX main screen configuration, choose which utility tabs are displayed, and control which options show up in the various different toolbars. Reset to default can always be pressed. For this tutorial, let's display all of the utility tabs. Clicking Launch allows the user to open the Runtime, T-Line, and Cable modules. Clicking Utilities allows access to the Config File Editor, Firmware Upgrade Tool, Protection and Automation Suite, MMS Server, Case Comparison Tool, and the various conversion tools available for importing cases from other software into RSCAD FX. Clicking Help provides access to the RSCAD manuals and the Quick Start Guide. The top toolbar menu also provides access to the file, open, and settings functionalities, as well as toggling the visibility of various tabs and opening utilities. Let's focus on changing the layout of our RSCAD FX screen. We can experiment with moving both utility and case tabs around and rearranging them by clicking the tab name, holding the mouse button down, and dragging it to a different area of the screen. A colored box shows a preview of where the tab will be dropped. A circle with a cross through it appears if the tab cannot be dropped in a given area. When the mouse button is released, the tab will move to the new position. The user can also select multiple tabs at one time by clicking on the empty space beside a group of tabs. The hand symbol will appear and the group can be moved together. Many different configurations are possible. It's also possible to undock tabs from the RSCAD FX window. Click the tab, drag and drop it outside the window. This can be done with individual or groups of tabs. You can also right click on the tab name and click undock. Using this functionality, it's possible to have multiple windows open within the RSCAD FX application. This button in the corner of each tab group can also be used for undocking. It's also possible to minimize a group of tabs by clicking the minus sign by the group. Once minimized, small icons representing the tabs will appear near the bottom of the window. Those icons can be clicked at any time in order to reopen the corresponding tab. The user can set things up so components can be easily moved between draft cases. Simply drag the tabs so they appear beside one another, click on the component you wish to move, hold the mouse button down to drag it, and bring your mouse to the case canvas where you want to drop it. This also works for larger groups of components. Simply click, drag to create a box around multiple components, and then drag the group to the new tab. If you hold down the control button on your keyboard before or after dragging the components, it maintains the original components where they were while creating a copy for you to move to the new tab. To move a group of components, you need to click on a component rather than on white space before you drag. At any time, to return the GUI to its original layout, click View in the top toolbar, then Reset Perspective. Or the same can be done by clicking on this icon. Now let's focus on the functionality of the specific utility tabs on the left. Note that for a given instance of RSCAD FX, only one utility tab of each type 
can be open at one time. The library and scratchpad tabs each have their own separate, more detailed demonstration video later in the series. But let's take a quick look here, beginning with the library. The library has two panes. The left-hand pane is the menu, used for organizing. It has three buttons, one for the master library, another for the user library, and a third for search results. You can click the buttons to expand the menu and locate different components by navigating through the tree. You can also use the keyboard arrow keys to browse the tree. The right-hand side of the library shows the components, which are displayed through convenient tiles. The tiles are all the same size and show a simplified representation of the component. Notice that as I hover my mouse over different tiles, a preview of the actual component drawing is shown. The library can be expanded or condensed by grabbing the side of the library panel and dragging it in either direction. To move a component into the draft case, simply drag and drop. Click on the component in the library, hold your mouse button down, move it onto the draft canvas, and release your mouse button. For more information on the library, please see the library video. Let's focus on the Scratchpad tab. While building large simulation cases, it's common to have to remove components in order to simplify the case and debug problems. If the user spends time entering data in a model and doesn't want to delete it and re-enter it later, it was possible to save the components in the library to keep them handy in previous versions of RSCAD. The new library no longer has this functionality as it only contains one instance of each component. This is why the Scratchpad was created. It provides a convenient space to keep these components for later. Components can be dragged over in the usual manner or by holding the control key to create a copy and keep the originals in the case. The user can have multiple Scratchpad pages, each with its own name. Once saved, these pages persist after the RSCAD effects session is closed and will be available when the program is relaunched. For more information on the Scratchpad, please see the Scratchpad video. Let's focus on the Messages tabs. The Messages area is now tabulated in RSCAD FX. Both Messages and Compile Messages are available in separate tabs. The quantity of errors, warnings, and messages that a user has is displayed. The user can toggle which type of message is displayed by clicking and unclicking the associated button. Let's focus on the File Manager tab. The File Manager tab provides a similar functionality to the File Manager module of the previous version of RSCAD. It allows users to browse the user directory for case files, as well as access samples and tutorial cases using the drop-down tree menu. To reset the samples and tutorials case directory, the user can right-click on the top level of the associated menu and click Reset Cases. Now, let's focus on the functionality of the case tabs. Each case tab has its own dedicated toolbar menu. Some key menu icons to become familiar with include the Case Settings button, which allows the user to adjust the simulation time step, the new Compile button, the Runtime Launch button, and the Auto Naming and Wire Mode toggle buttons. Exploring the other case toolbar buttons by hovering your mouse will reveal features like viewing the DTP file and other associated files created by the compiler, or running a load flow. The Q icon toggles the Quick Access toolbar on the right-hand side of the draft canvas. This toolbar provides easy access to various case building and control components from the library, and is described in more detail in the library video. Tabs to indicate and navigate between subsystems are now located at the bottom of the draft canvas. RSCAD FX no longer includes both a three-phase and single-phase circuit view. Cases are now always built in single-line diagram format by default. A breakout component can be used to build out the individual phases with single-phase components from the library. RSCAD FX includes familiar Windows shortcuts that use your keyboard's control button. Holding down Ctrl and C will copy components, Ctrl and V will paste. 
A full list of shortcuts can be found in the RSCATFX documentation. It should be noted that our previous hotkey shortcuts can still be used. This concludes the general introduction video. The next videos are on the library, wire mode, auto naming, and scratch pad. The final video shows a walkthrough of building a very simple case in RSCATFX. Thanks for watching and happy simulating.